Good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you guys. We have made it to the middle of the week. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Harpy Aliyah. Hey, Harpy Tanya. Good morning. Hey, Harpy Camille. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hey, Harpy Rachelle. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Harpy Doris. Harpy Danita. Harpy Tisha. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Harpy Carolyn, Harpy Eva, good morning. Hey, Harpy Delane and Harpy Donald, Harpy Belinda, good morning to you guys. Hey, Harpy Juanita, Harpy Carolyn, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Let's see who else popped up here. Hey, Harpy Troy, Harpy Andrea, good morning, good morning. Harpy Juanita, Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness. Welcome to the gathering of hearts on this morning. And we will be continuing on. So your daily dosage is prayer is essential for the transition and reposition. Prayer is essential for uh, the transition and reposition. And so Yesterday we went over, hey Heartbeat Alicia, yesterday we went over the five things that happen from prayer. We said from praying we gain access, we gain wisdom, we gain courage, we gain results, and we gain promotion. Amen. And so I hope you guys have been applying these. I hope you have been getting in there and praying more than you usually would because I'm telling you, um, prayer changes things. We've all heard that cliche growing up, how prayer changes things, but it does. But this is what I want you to do today. I want you to start looking at prayer as if you are investing in yourself. You know, sometimes we need to renew our mind or we need another approach, you know, to help us to get in the habit of doing something beneficial for our lives. And so I want you to think about this. Think about prayer as if you are investing in yourself. We all know um, or have heard about investing in the stock market and, you know, how that is. And so if you look at prayer like investing in yourself, so it's like this. If you have a low or moderate prayer life, you're going to have a small degree of results. You'll kind of like be operating on your own. You won't feel the power of God. If you have a moderate aggressive prayer life, you'll have a significant degree of results. You know, you'll have a little something, something to talk about. You'll have a testimony here or there. But if you have a highly aggressive prayer life, this is where you're all in. This is where Jesus is. This is, you know, what you do. You know, you're actively refusing. Using, um, the power of the devil. So you're praying all the time. Prayer is what you do. So you're moving mountains, moving mountains, and you're denouncing demons, and you're um, professing prosperity. You, you know, when you send your faith out there to get something, it brings it back. And when you speak a word and you don't see what you say, you got the nerve to say, listen here, I said blah, 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 and I expect it to come. See, when you are in aggressive prayer, you see change in your life. You see results in your life. You experienced this promotion that we talked about on yesterday. Why? Because you're always communicating with God and God is always communicating with you. You know that if you are aggressive in the stock market and you know what you're doing, then you are wealthy. You can go where you want to go and stay as long as you want to stay. Where if you are aggressive in your prayer life, you can go where you want to go and you can stay as long as you want to stay because you are in constant communion with God and he is always giving you direction. He is always giving giving you instructions. He is always presenting a blueprint for your life. And so you want to be aggressive in your prayer life. When you begin to be highly aggressive in your prayer life, you know, you begin to pray and you begin to change the world. Remember over in, um, what is it? First Chronicles 7, 14, God says this. He says that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, would seek my face, would turn from their wicked ways, he says, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive and then I would heal this land. And so when you begin to be an aggressive prayer, you can shut COVID down before it gets started. You can shut down all of this violence. You can shut down all of these turbulent things that are happening in the world, but it only comes from when you are in aggressive prayer because when you are in aggressive prayer, you move things, you change things, you change the atmosphere, you change the world in which we live. Somebody say, I'm getting ready to be in aggressive prayer for God. Glory to God. And so today, 
Let's look at Matthew 6, and I'm going to be reading it from the easy reading version as well as the King James Version. And here in Matthew 6, Jesus is giving guidelines on giving to the poor. He's giving guidelines on prayer, and he's giving guidelines on fasting. And it says this. It says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to stand in the synagogues and on street corners and pray loudly. They want people to see them. The truth is, that's all the reward they will get. And so, you know, we already talked about, you know, how we should pray. Um, we talked about the, the steps in doing it. You know, how we want to do adoration. We want to do confession. We want to do thanksgiving. And we want to do supplication. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the dosage from Monday. And so we talked about that. And we just talked about, again, what comes from that. But he's saying this, that when you pray, don't try Try to be a loud mouth so that you can get attention, so that you can seem super spiritual, so everybody will come to you. No, it says this. It says, but when you pray, you should go into your room and close the door. Then pray to your father. He is there in that private place. He can see what is done in private and he will reward you. And when you pray, this is good. This is key right here. And when you pray, don't be like the people who don't know God. They say the same things again and again. So it's saying, don't be, you know, repetitious with your prayers, acting as if God didn't hear you the first time. Like he's wearing, uh, you know, um, a hearing aid and he needs you to keep saying it over and over and over again. No, people that don't know God pray like that because when you know God, you know glory to God, then when you are praying in his will that he hears you and you have confidence in this thing that if he hears you that he's going to answer you. Amen? So it says stop acting like you don't know God. Stop acting like you don't know him. Stop acting like you've never had an encounter with him and asking him for the same stuff over and over. Keep repeating the same old prayer. He says no, don't do that. He he says, they think that if they say it enough, their God will heal, he, hear them. Don't be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. And so God, remember, in his word, he's already told us to not be afraid. He's already told us that he has already gone before us. So if he's already gone before you, he already knows what you need. So you don't have to keep saying the pr same prayer. Lord, send money. Lord, send healing. He already knows what you need. But you've got to go boldly before him, boldly before the throne of grace, boldly in confidence, knowing that when I pray in his will, that he hears me. And because he hears me, glory to God, he's going to answer me. So don't be listening. So now we're going to make a change today. Because if that was you, if you were the one that was praying the same repetitive prayer every day, it ended today. Because you just heard the word. You've just seen the word if you're looking at it and you understand the word and you're going to be transformed into the word you're now becoming an aggressive prayer if you're being if you're fasting with your church you know when we fast we're turning down things and we're not going back to those things that we used to do and so today will begin the day when you will stop praying repetitively but you will have boldness and confidence in your God that when you say it one time that he already knows what you need and that he's coming to your rescue amen and so then it's says this and I'm switching over to King James version it says so this is how you ought to pray it says our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven and so we see right here that God wants a purpose to be fulfilled down here on earth that goes back to if my people who are called by my name see he's got a purpose he's got a plan and he needs you to pray a certain way so that what he already said what he already established that what is established up there in heaven that it can be established down here on earth and he needs us his people to pray the prayer that he needs us to pray he says this give us this day our daily bread stop jumping ahead into tomorrow stop going back to yesterday you have grace and mercy for today he says give us this day our daily bread he ain't asked you to go in the future he ain't asked you to go in the past he told you to stay focused 
focus and pray for this day right here. Pray this day that there is no violence. Pray this day that there is no more people struggling and that there are no more people that are hungry. Pray this day that everybody that leaves out of their house, that they get back home to their families. Pray this day that it's not the last time somebody will see their loved one because of violence. He said, give us this day. Glory to God. See, we got to get back to kingdom living and stop worldly living and doing what the world would have us to do. But God has given us a blueprint on how to live. You want to change this world? You tired of seeing tragic stuff on the news? Get your tail in the Bible. Read what the word says and become who God already said that you are. It's time to change. It's trying to, it's time to do something different. It's time to really transition and be repositioned where God would have you. He says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let that mess go. Stop holding grudges against people. Stop holding on to unforgiveness. It's clogging up your communication with God. It's like a telephone conversation. They got a whole lot of static. They can't hear you and you can't hear them. Let it go on today. You are carrying stuff from 2021. You are carrying stuff from 2020. You are carrying stuff from 1946. Let that stuff go. Live in 2022 and get ready for what God has for you in the future. Glory to God. Then it says, and lead us not into temptation. Rescue us from ourselves, Lord God. Settle this flesh right now, Lord God, that we may operate in the spirit. See, you ought to be at a place where you're tired of doing the same thing. That you're tired of living like you've been living. And you ought to be telling your flesh, you will be under control. You will no longer control me. I am in charge. Rescue us, God, from ourselves. He says, but deliver us from evil. You know, sometimes we blame the devil for a whole lot of stuff. Sometimes it ain't the devil, it's you. It's you not getting in control of your flesh. Well, I declare and decree right, that, right now on this day that today is the last day that your flesh will control you. You will get that thing up under subjection. You will be the Christian that God calls you to be, the flesh will no longer have control over you. Confess it right now. Say, I'm in charge. I'm in charge of me. The spirit of the Lord God is the one who leads me. It says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Do you see what prayer does when we get in alignment, when we get in agreement with our heavenly father, with our Lord Jesus? This is the way we ought to pray. This is how we move mountains. This is how we slay giants. This is how we make our faith go and bring back what we sent it for. We get into alignment. We follow the blueprint of Jesus. He's told us how to pray. When we do what he says, we'll see the results. Hey, listen, that's your daily doses for the day. I love you guys a bunch. I am Regina Banks, affectionately known as Pastor G, your GPS to wholeness. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so there. You can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. Come on, let's close this thing out. You know how we do this. Say, God wants me whole, and I am getting whole by the minute. Again, I'm Regina Banks. Love you guys a bunch. We'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. Go out there and have a speck while amazing day. Begin praying and change this world that we live in so that we may fulfill the purpose that God wants us to fulfill down here on earth. Again, I love you guys a bunch.